Hi, my name is Mr Exum and welcome to my EdTech channel where I show you how to get the most out of technology in the classroom. We all enjoy a Kahoot as a bit of fun at the end of a lesson or a topic, but how can you still do that when your students are remote learning? Well in this video I'll show you two ways you can still use Kahoot in this situation. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing is to go to kahoot.com and sign up if you haven't already got an account. When you sign up, you've got the option to pick your teacher and choose your your, uh, your school and put in your details there. You can sign up with Microsoft if you've got a, a Microsoft account or a Google one, so it's pretty quick and straightforward. Once you've got an account, it's a matter of just logging in. Now, the good news is that during the uh, COVID-19 outbreak that Kahoot are giving away Kahoot Premium uh, during that time to schools. So if you are a school uh, and you want to get a premium account, then um, hopefully the person in charge can organize that. They contact Kahoot. Kahoot will give uh, the premium access and then they will be able to send a link out to all the teachers in your school. So I've done that in my school and so teachers will have got a link and they can click that link and it will allow them to convert their normal Kahoot account into a premium account. And this gives them a few extra uh, features. It allows you to create uh, different types of Kahoot questions which um, gives you more options there which is quite exciting. Uh, and it also allows you to uh, be a member of the school and have uh, shared areas. Okay, so there are all these different folders within my school area. And so when I make a Kahoot, I can put it into that area and then anybody else who has um, work, uh, other Kahoots, can also share them in the school area. It also means that any games that are played within there will be branded. You see it says branded here and that has been branded, that will be branded with the school logo. So it just helps keep that um, school identity on Kahoot over the remote learning period. So I'm going to show you quickly how to create a Kahoot uh, very fast and then the two ways you can use it in remote learning. So I think the quickest way to create a Kahoot is obviously to click the create button and you're going to click create. You can try out some of these templates if you like, but I think create. And then there's this fantastic option here for question bank. So I can start typing a question like, what is the nucleus? And I can find a question that I like and click add. And it's just added it in. So I can quickly search for keywords, key terms, uh, questions that I would want to ask find the correct type of question that I want and add it in. I can still edit that afterwards if I want, but it's quite a quick and easy way to make one. Just make sure you get rid of any blank questions, otherwise you won't be able to save it. And when you are ready to go, you can then uh, click done, give it a title. Okay, and it says the Kahoot is ready to be played. Now, at the moment, that's stored in my Kahoot, but I can move that into the school area by clicking on the three dots, move, go back, choose my school, and then choose the uh, folder that I want to store it into. So I can move my personal ones into the school area for other people to use during this time, which can help with, uh, with the remote learning process. Now, if you're really in a hurry, just go to the Discover section, search for a Kahoot, and steal somebody else's entire Kahoot. Find a Kahoot that looks good to you. You can see how many thousands of plays they've had, which is quite a good sign. We can click on it and actually look at the specific questions. And just click on the three dots and duplicate. And then what it does is it copies it into your Kahoots. So your two options with remote learning. One is to do a live lesson. So you'd want to launch whatever it is that you use for your live lessons, whether that's Zoom or whether that's um, another video conferencing platform like Teams or Hangouts for education and you start your video lesson with the pupils and then you would very much start a Kahoot like you would do in an actual lesson. The key thing is to share your screen via the software, pick your Kahoot and click play and you're going to do teach. Your Kahoot is loading and you've got your options. Uh, you do want to do one versus one. You'll be able to choose your options here. I would suggest making sure that they can't do nicknames. You want to make sure that you've got the actual names for your data at the end and also because they're not in the same classroom as you, it's harder to control. 
And when you're ready, off you go. Click classic. They'll be able to see your screen and who's winning and they'll have all the answers on their screen. The other option is to play a Kahoot but choose the assign button. Okay, this is a challenge game, it's called a Kahoot challenge. And this allows you to pretty much set it as a self-paced homework assignment for them. Okay, so they've still got the question timer on and you can switch that on or off, you can randomize the order. Um, so there's some quite nice options here. You set the deadline and you click create. Okay, and then you send them these details. Okay, you can send them a link or you just send them this pin. Uh, if you're using Google Classroom or another platform like Teams, again, you can share that directly in assignments within those platforms if you're using those with students. And after the uh, game has completely finished, you'll be able to get some data on that by going to your report section at the top. And you can see whether it's a live game or whether it's a challenge. And see, this one says challenge in progress. That was one I just started because it obviously hasn't finished yet. But when a challenge has finished, you can click on it and you can get some data there on how the students have got on, um, which is really, really useful. So there you go, quite a fun way to add a competitive element to your live lessons or get some data for your mark book. For now though, I hope that was useful and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. See you next time.